Welcome back everyone, my name is Kazuki Miji. This is part two, the ending of the story of the Demon House located in Gary, Indiana. If you missed part one, I'll leave a link in the description below. Apparently you guys really like part one. It has over 200 views on the first day, so it's not a lot, but it means a lot to me guys. Thank you. So where did we leave off in part one? Up to this point, the family has been experiencing paranormal activities in the hospital, in the house. It was having an emotional impact on everyone. At the end of part one, Latoya, the mother, and Rosa, the grandmother, and the kids were all separated. DCS, Department of Child Services, took the steps to separate the kids. April 20, 2012. Here we are introduced to a new key figure in the story, and that's Reverend Mike Maginot. While leading a Bible study, Reverend Maginot receives a call. Who could it be? It came from the hospital chaplain. The chaplain asked him to perform an exorcism on Latoya's nine-year-old son. And that was the son who was in the hospital, you know, walking on the walls. Before he agreed, Reverend Maginoth wanted to speak with the family, and he wanted to rule out any natural causes for the boy's actions. April 22nd, 2012. Reverend Maginoth goes to the demon house and visits the family. For two hours, Latoya and Rosa talk to Reverend Maginoth about their experiences in the house, about the shadowy figures, about the levitation, about the creepy noises. Then Rosa suddenly sees something from the distance. She pointed out the flickering lights that was coming from the bathroom. The flickering would stop every time Father Maginoth would walk in to investigate. In an interview with the star, he said, quote, it must be scared of me. Minutes later, they would continue with the conversation. All of a sudden, Rosa saw the blinds in the kitchen swinging even though there was no air current. Reverend Maginot also saw wet footprints throughout the living room, as if, if someone was walking around the house. After talking to Latoy and Rosa for about four hours, Father Maginot said that he was convinced that the family was being tormented by demons. He told the family to leave. It was not safe anymore there. Latoya and Rosa listened and they moved with relatives. A week later, the mother Latoya and the grandmother Rosa were back in the house. DCS, Department of Child Services, came to check on the condition of the home. The DCS worker asked a Lake County police officer to come with her. Two other officers, one each from Gary and Hammond Police Departments, asked to join them out of professional curiosity. I guess they really wanted to see if this was a hoax or not. One of the police officers who joined, he was the Gary police captain. His name was Austin. They all entered the house. Here's the breakdown of the house. The main floor had three bedrooms, a living room, one bathroom, and hardware floors. There was a door in the kitchen that led to a basement with concrete floors. Directly under the stairs was a dirt floor. The concrete around it, it was jagged as though it had been broken. Remember this part because it's gonna be really important. While everyone was in the basement, one of the officer's audio recorders malfunctioned. Another officer recorded audio when he played it back later. He heard a unknown voice whisper, hey. The officer also took photos of the house. And here's what the police report says. A photograph shows a white cloud-like image in the upper right-hand corner of the photograph, just behind the third step leading up from the basement. The lower half of the image is cut off by the third step. It appears the image is just behind the third step in the photograph. When the image is enlarged, it resembles a face. Austin, the Gary police captain, says photos that he snapped on his iPhone, it also seemed to have a strange silhouette in them. It gets even freakier, guys. The radio in his police car malfunctioned on the way home. The garage at his home refused to open, even though the power was on everywhere else. He also said that the driver's seat in his car would like move back and forth. He took the car to a dealership and the mechanic told him that the motor on the driver's seat was broken, which the mechanic said could have caused a distraction leading to an accident. In an interview with the star the news outlet, Austin, the Gary police captain, mentioned that he believed in the ghosts and the supernatural but said that he didn't believe in demons. Austin said that he changed his mind after visiting the demon house. May 10, 2012. At this point, everyone goes back to the demon house. We have Rosa, Latoya, Austin, Reverend Maginoth, and two other police officers, not to mention two Lake County police officers and a new DCS family case manager. The original DCS case manager did not want to come back to the house, so she had a new manager to go instead of her. So in the house, the new case manager touches some like strange liquid she saw dripping in the basement. 
Reverend Maginot told the police that he wanted to check the dirt under the stairs to see if there was any like personal objects. The group split, some go to the basement while others stay in the living room. One of the police officers digs a hole beneath the stairs. What they find shocks everyone. They find a fingernail, underwear, a political shirt pen, a lid for a small cookie pan, socks, candy wrappers, and a heavy metal object. Above them was the case manager in the living room, and she had an unexpected experience. Suddenly, her left thingy finger started to tingle and wooden. She complained it felt broken. She would start to get headaches and shoulder pain whenever the priest, Reverend Maginot, started questioning Rosa about the demons. When nightfall came, Austin, the Gary police captain, who has investigated murders, armed robberies, for more than three decades on the force, said he was not staying in the house past dark. The other officer stayed and noticed an oil-like substance dripping from the blinds in the basement, but could not figure out where it was coming from. To make sure it wasn't Rosa the grandmother or Latoya the mother, the two officers used paper towels to clean it off. The officer sealed the room for 25 minutes and stood nearby so no one could walk in. According to police reports, when they went back in, the oil reappeared. Reverend Maginot told the police the liquid was a manifestation of the paranormal and demonic presence. Here is where Reverend Maginot received permission from the bishop to perform an exorcism on the toy almonds. The Exorcism when the night came, Reverend Maginot performed an exorcism on the Toya Amens. The ritual consisted of prayer, statements, and appeals to the cast out the demons. Two police officers and the new DCS case manager attended the ritual. The case manager said, quote, We felt like someone was in the room with you, someone breathing down your neck. She also said that she had a string of medical problems after visiting the demon house. A week later, after she visited the demon house for the last time, she said that she got third degree burns from a motorcycle. Within 30 days, she also broke three ribs jet skiing, broke a hand when she hit a table, then broke an ankle running in flip flops. Zach from Ghost Adventures also made the point in the movie that, you know, when someone goes into the house, uh, the following days they would have bad luck, bad fortune. Here's what the case manager said, quote, I had friends who wouldn't talk to me because they believed that something had attached itself to me. June 2012, Reverend Maginot asked Latoya to look up the name of the demon that was tormenting her. Latoya said that she and her friend looked up demon names based on the problems that the family was having. The unexpected things would happen, her computer would shut down, and she would feel sick and lightheaded. Then bingo, she finds the name. In the article it tells you the name, but for this video, I don't want to like say it out loud because I don't want to give it power. This information helped. Reverend Maginot would use this name to cast out the demons. He performed the exorcism on the Torah, two in English, and the last one in Latin. Reverend Maginot would say that the demon voice would get louder and louder. I couldn't find any footage of this, but you can only imagine what they must have experienced. Two police officers were there in the church in case the mother needed to be restrained. Reverend Maginot would carry out the final exorcism at the end of June 2012. This would be the last time Latoya would see Reverend Maginot. A new beginning. After the exorcism, Rosa and Latoya drive back to the place where they were staying, not in the demon house. It was with a relative. Latoya felt free and without fear, but one thing was missing, their kids. They were still separated by DCS. On November 12th, about six months after the DCS took the kids, Latoya regained custody of her three children. Latoya called her children's return the happiest day in her life. The family moved out of the demon house and finally felt safe. DCS continued to check on the children and make sure they were going to school until the case was closed in February. Here's the last quote from Latoya. When you hear something like this, don't assume it's not real because I've lived it. I know it's real. Local attention. The place was vacant for a while after the family left. At some point, the landlord of the house had to call the Gary Police Department to ask officers to stop driving by the house because it was scaring the new tenants. Here's what the landlord had to say, quotes, I thought I heard it all. This was a new one to me. My belief system has a hard time jumping over that bridge. He stated that there were no problems in the house before or after the family lived there. So this comment from the landlord caused a lot of controversy. You know, was this a hoax or was this real? National attention. A couple years later, the story of the demon house went viral. It's your first look inside the house known as the portal to hell. 
a place where demons supposedly wrought havoc with a helpless family in horror straight out of The Exorcist. That the power of Christ compels you! According to TMZ, Zach Bagans from Ghost Adventures bought the place for $35,000. Here is what Zach said, quote, if it's true that this home is a portal to hell, then I want to go there and see what happens. It was pretty clear that he was going to investigate the movie. Zach Bagans released the movie, The Demon House. Yo, it doesn't, it doesn't want me. It wants him? Yeah, it wants you. The film received mixed reviews. No spoilers, but there were some moments where I had to pause the movie just because <laughs> I was getting creeped out. <laughs> like every small sound, like a door closing, would like freak me out. <laughs> the house. Zach decides to demolish the house. In the movie, he explains why. But before he does, he takes specific artifacts from the house, from the basement, and takes it back to his haunted museum, which is located in Las Vegas. Here's what he had to say about the artifacts he took from the house. So when police investigated the case, they dug into this dirt and four feet under, they found a series of unusual objects, uh, panties, two uh, children's socks, uh, other objects, a fingernail that's still missing in the dirt. Um, and when they found that, the exorcist, Father Mike Maginot, concluded that a particular person, who I believe I know who that was, uh, put a, a curse, had knowledge of some dark religion to conjure something in that home or further uh, empower it. The legend lives on. If you go to the site right now, it's just a piece of land. Everything's gone. There are rumors that people at night go there to perform rituals, demonic rituals. I couldn't confirm this, but it is creepy. Conclusion. The reason why I wanted to showcase this story was because there were people from different backgrounds. You have hospital workers, DCS workers, police officers, who came forward to tell their story. They had nothing to gain from this. All of them at some point when they visited the house had experienced a paranormal activity. The most important part of this is that the family, Rosa, Latoya, the three kids, you know, they went through a lot. They went through hard times, but at the end, they reunited as a team. They made it, they defeated this. They were able to finally live peaceful lives. And I think that's the most important thing is that they're safe, they're happy, and they're not living in fear. Comment below if you've seen the movie and what's your opinion on the story. If you enjoy these types of videos where I talk about the stories of these cases, then hit that subscribe button and like button. Thank you for watching the video. My name is Cosmic Miggy and I'll see you next time.